Greetings, brave dummy. I'm RPG, and I'll try my best to teach you Ruby game scripting system. That's RGSS. This series of tutorials is aimed at people who have no programming experience whatsoever. But having such experience can also help you. About RGSS. RGSS, that's Ruby game scripting language, is as simple as the name implies. A scripting language based on Ruby. Ruby is an object-oriented programming language created by Yukihiro Matsumoto. You can find more information at Ruby's official website, that's www.rubylanguage.org. I think RGSS is easy to learn and use, although it could look weird at times. With RGSS, you could have great control over your RMXP game. You could modify almost everything, and you could add almost everything. Basically, the limit is your ability and knowledge. About coding. Computers are dumb. They don't really think like you. Assuming you do, the computer follows basic instructions to perform operations. You need to give it some commands, and it executes them. For example, if you wanted to know the sum of 1 and 2, you'd ask the computer something like, Please calculate the sum of 1 and 2. But then, you don't need to be polite to the computer, and it doesn't make a difference to it whether or not you use the and of. So we end with, calculate sum 1 and 2. Well, why use so many words anyways? We can just do, calculate 1 plus 2. Wait, why add calculate? What else can it do with 1 plus 2? make a song about a 1 and a plus sign and a 2. So we end up with 1 plus 2. Simple, isn't it? The point of the whole thing is that the instructions we give to the computers are written in some sort of simplified English. Talk about high-level languages here. Programming languages like natural ones have a set of words and rules. However, there aren't as much words or rules in programming languages. Only the useful things are there. Learning the important words and rules, or grammar, syntax, whatever, doesn't mean you've learned the language. Let's say that I know all about English grammar and that I know every word in a dictionary. Can I go up to a person and say, your tea is good for egg production under the light of the new super monkey nose? Well, I can, but it doesn't really make much sense. It's not a logical thing to say. Same with computers. You don't just give it stupid instructions just because they are valid. Things should make sense, or else you might get some nasty errors. Blocks. You can give the computer only one command, but you'd most likely give it more. For example, not a real code. Ask the user for the password, wait for the user to type in the password. If the password the user typed is correct, play some victory music. If the password is wrong, punch the user in the face. Duplicate the program and spread copies all over the user computer. Start sending emails with the copy of the program. Become one of the most famous viruses. Uh, maybe I went a bit too far. But I hope you got the basic idea. The, gr the group of instruction we give could form a block of code. And although it doesn't sound, sound that important, it is. Long ago, programs were just lines of code with little organization. Everything was in one big block that is executed line by line from top to bottom. If for some reason you wanted to go up again, you'd ask the computer to go to that line. The whole thing was very messy and produced spaghetti code. No, not code written in Italian, just messy, unorganized, bad code. It looked like this. Display a message. Welcome to the Super Program 007. Ask user to import a number. Ask user to input another number. Calculate the sum of the numbers and display it. Display a message. Do you want to exit? Y for yes and N for no. If the user types Y, exit the program. If the user types N, go to line 2, ask for, for a input for another two numbers. Basically, every time you choose no, the program will be executed again. What's wrong about that? It's not really obvious in the little example. But in big complicated programs, it end up like a maze with lots of go-tos and jumps from line to line. When the code is too long, 
it'd be hard for you to follow and understand it, which makes it hard to improve it or fix bugs. Functions. Well, worry not. Functions are there to fix this. Sometimes functions could be called subroutines or methods. Ruby calls them that, but it's not very accurate. Basically, a function is a block of related code that you call. You create a function, have all your code inside it, and then call it as much as you want. There is no need to rewrite stuff or to jump around like a monkey. Functions organize your programs and make things simpler. Well, here's an example. Function name, colon, sum. Function takes two values and calls them number one and number two. Function starts here. Calculate the sum of number one and number two and display it. Function ends here. Call the function sum with values one and two. Call the function sum with values 10 and five. Call the function sum with values 29 and seven. Running this program, it's not real by the way, would display 3, 15, and 36. Instead of writing the calculate code every time, we just call the function. This can be very useful. Let's say you're making a game and made a function to draw things. Another to check input and another to, for calculations. You can then do call draw, call input check, call calculations, go to line 1, draw. Wow, you've got a game! Well, not really. This might make a little sense, but uh, just know that functions are blocks of related code that could be called. I'll explain them more in details later. Also keep in mind that functions are called methods in RGSS. I use the word function here because that's the commonly used term in programming. I'll use methods when talking about RGSS though. Just remember that they are the same thing. Variables. Wait, why am I discussing variables after functions? Shouldn't they be discussed first? I don't know. I think that code block function flows well, but I could be wrong. Variables are places to store data on your computer. Think of a variable as a locker that you put something in, and then you can refer to the thing by saying the locker's number. So you would say, please give me the monkey in locker 5 or just 5. Not a very good example. Remember how the sum and function in the previous example accepted two values, number 1 and number 2, and calculated their sum? Uh, you see, number 1 and number 2 could be anything. They could be 1 and 2, 10 or 5, 29 and 7. We just store the numbers in two variables called number 1 and number 2, and they'd act as if they were the actual numbers. Still don't get it? You know how schools have uh, ID numbers? And, uh, well, my ID number is 1921. And when I'm having an exam, they ask me to write my ID number on the paper. They don't care about my name because they can just use my ID number to get everything they need to know about me. So the ID and me are the same. A variable is like an ID number. It doesn't need to be a number. Just have letters like FOA for my name's initials. It represents a certain value just as an ID number represents a student. Makes no sense? Too bad. You're just dumb. Nah, just kidding. It'll become uh, easier and you know to understand when we have real code examples. Look, okay, arrays. Let's say that in some city they have many people with the name John Smith. People often get confused and if you yell, John Smith, in the street, then tens of people would look at you. Now, that's a big problem. For example, the city mayor, Mr. John Smith, was arrested because he was a suspect for some crime. Murder of John Smith. But it turned out to be a mistake because the real murderer was another John Smith. So the mayor was angry and decided to do something. He decided that all John Smiths should have numbers. The mayor would be called John Smith number one, another person would be called John Smith number two, and so on. And so until you have John Smith 9999999, the people in the city lived happily ever after and having too many Johns wasn't a problem anymore. In programming, there are situations where you'd have many variables, 
with similar functions or names. You might need variables to hold all the skills your hero has.